Esky Dots by Aaron Janzi was designed to look like Esky art, hence the name. If it sounds familiar, you may have heard of it from a Vice Motherboard article that came out last year. Or maybe you've heard it from somewhere else, I don't really know. In ASCII dots, units called dots move along a path. A dot is created at the start of the program wherever a period is located. It can move horizontally along minus symbols, and it can move vertically along pipes. Slashes act as mirrors that dots bounce off of to change direction. If you have some sort of phobia of mirrors, don't worry, because there is another option to change the direction of dots. Be fung style arrows. These arrows have a very annoying quirk that doesn't really need to exist, but we'll get to that when we get to that. When a dot reaches an ampersand, the program will end and all the dots will stop moving. Oh yeah, dots move at the same time, so if you have code that contains two dots, both of them will move simultaneously. Oh, and make sure to use a plus wherever the paths intersect. To delete a dot, make it fall off the edge of the path. Dots act as both instruction pointers and as variables, so if you want a program to do, well, anything interesting, it is required that you use more than one dot. But we're not at that part of the video yet, so for now we'll only be using one dot. To set a dot's value, you have it collide with a number sign. What follows it is the new value for the dot, so if the number sign is followed by a 42, the dot would have the value of 42. Of course, since code can run in any direction, this code would need to be rotated based on which direction the dot is moving in. To output the dot's value, you type a dollar sign followed by a number sign, so this program here will output a 42. You are also able to output a string. You simply proceed a string in quotes with a dollar sign, and it will output that string. That's how the Hello World program is made. Also, it seems that direct printing is the only time that ASCII dots like strings, since dots can only store floating point numbers. ASCII dots also has support for input as a number, which means that a truth machine program can be made. If you want to know what a truth machine program is, pause the video to read the description now, I'm sick of explaining it in every video. To store input into a dot, that dot must pass over a number sign followed by a question mark. The tilde is the only command that can be used for control flow. It accepts input from two directions, one from the bottom, and one from horizontally in either direction. When a dot reaches it, it waits there until the other dot arrives. Once both dots arrive, the dot coming in vertically is checked. If that dot is not equal to zero, the tilde will allow the dot from the horizontal direction to continue on its merry way. Otherwise, the dot coming in from the horizontal direction is forced to exit the tilde by moving upwards. Afterwards, the dot that came in from the bottom is deleted and it is probably thrown into a fire pit somewhere. In the context of the truth machine, the input the user typed is the value coming in from below the tilde. The dot coming in from the side doesn't need to do... well... anything. Okay, it needs to move over to the tilde, but that's not very noteworthy. If the input is 0, the number 0 is simply outputted and the program ends. If the input is 1, things are slightly more complicated. For one, the underscore is placed after the dollar sign. The underscore makes it so that a new line is not printed after our value, which it normally is. Secondly, the program must now loop indefinitely. To illustrate a problem I have with ASCII dots, Creature will be attempting to create this infinite loop. So, you said that ASCII dots has be fun style arrows earlier, so we do this? But Creature, that is completely wrong! What? This is stupid. Why on earth is this incorrect? It looks pretty okay to me. I mean, it has the be fun style arrows. What's wrong with it? Well, for some bizarre and completely unnecessary reason, the Befunge style arrows only work when the dot is going perpendicular to them. So the left arrow will not make the dot move leftwards if that dot was previously going to the right. But all is not lost, because the parentheses do this exact feature we are looking for. Which is nice, except that it, one, would completely get rid of the need for the left and right Befunge arrows, two, does not have a vertical counterpart, and three, it adds to the amount of commands that are just used to move dots around the track! Seriously, why are there so many commands dedicated to determining how the dot move along the track? There only needs to be four. Um, maybe some people would prefer to use these ones because they look nicer. Shut up, creature. Anyway, here's the code in action. I use the online interpreter because it highlights where the dots are in red. I also made a calculator program. It contains four operations, and because ASCII dots can only accept input as numbers, each operation is assigned a number 1 through 4. The first thing our program needs to do is accept input which represents which type of calculation to perform. Next, our dot is duplicated. The asterisk command distributes copies of the dot it receives in all directions except for the one it received the original dot from. The copy that moves downwards has a more interesting life than the one that moves rightwards. The dot moves into an equals operation. An operation takes in two values, one coming in horizontally and one coming in vertically, performs whatever operation is inside of the brackets, and then a single dot exits. If the brackets are square, 
The vertically moving value is on the left side of the operation, and the result exits vertically. If the brackets are curly, the horizontally moving value is the one on the left side, and the result exits horizontally. In this context, it checks if our input is equal to another dot with the value of 1. The operator will return a 0 if our values are not equal, and a 1 if they are equal. And it then exits out at the bottom. The value is fed into a tilde. If the value coming in from below the tilde isn't 0, aka the input and the 1 are equal, the dot is duplicated into two copies, input is taken in, and the dots are added together. The final result is then printed onto the screen. And what happens if the input is not 1 and this process never starts in the first place? Well, remember the other dot that moved rightwards across the top of the screen? It heads to an almost identical structure, duplicates itself, and then repeats this process all over again. Except this time, it checks if its value is 2 instead of 1, and it subtracts instead of adds. And then it heads to another one. And another one. But there is no other one after that, because that one doesn't exist. And now the program has been completely finished. Fizz Buzz! While that sounds like a beef-flavored soda drink, it is actually a game that is meant to teach third graders or so about division. And I never actually played it. The rules of this game are simple. Start counting up by ones. If a number is divisible by three, replace that number with Fizz. If a number is divisible by five, replace that number with Buzz. If a number is divisible by both of them, replace that number with Fizz Buzz. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, it's because creating a program that outputs Fizz Buzz numbers is actually a popular programming problem. The FizzBuzz program requires the use of constants such as 3, 5, and 0. One way constants can be created is like this, where the constant is repeatedly duplicated into new dots. Yeah, I hope you like lag if you do this because this is the worst idea ever! A better idea would be to duplicate any dot that is going to need the constant and changing the copy's value, which is done in all these locations in this program. The value that the FizzBuzz program is currently calculating will be referred to as X for the remainder of the video. At the beginning of the program, X is set to 1. This program also uses the modulus operation quite often. Modulus calculates the remainder of the inputs fed into it. This section of the program here checks if x divides evenly by 3, since if the current value divides evenly, its remainder will be 0. This value is then fed into a tilde to determine whether or not to output fizz. A similar structure is used to check for x modulo 5 to determine whether or not to output buzz. The bottom half of this program checks if x modulo 3 and x modulo 5 are both not equal to 0. If x meets this requirement, the number itself is printed. This part of the program makes use of the not equal operation, which is similar to the equals operation, only the exact opposite, and it also makes use of an and operation, which performs a bitwise and. The last thing our dot does is increment x by 1 and output a new line before it cycles back to the start of the cycle to cycle all over again, thus making it a cycle. By the way, this program is way easier to make in a normal programming language such as Java. Seriously, it took me probably 10 times as long to write the FizzBuzz program in ASCII dots than it did to write a FizzBuzz program in Java. The GitHub link for AskyDoss is in the description for anyone who wishes to try it out. Also, I'm going to be simplifying my videos so that I can make them quicker. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time!